a little while, but I'm back with a uh, hi-fi video. So a video of something that I've wanted to do for a long time. I'm quite excited about it. We've got every Hegel amplifier, integrated amplifier that they do behind me from the 590 all the way down to the 95. And I'm gonna release a series of videos over a period of time on each and every one of them. And this is the first one. Uh, kind of explaining what I'm going to do. I'll go into the ins and outs of the amplifiers, uh, the reasons why one is better than the other. Um, I'm going to do them backwards because I believe that stepping down is a, uh, a far easier, more predictable, more stable way of reviewing a piece of equipment is to take bits away rather than add bits. Can, adding bits can get confusing removing things sometimes is extremely easy to locate with your ears and your, and your brain you know when you're listening so yeah we're going to run through all of them yeah I, I, I know all of them quite well uh, bar the bar the 120 I've, I've not got much time on that but they're all here so i will have right i don't often script anything as you know and as you can probably tell i don't believe in scripting i i, I find it's it's scripting or pretending to act in it. It's very, it's very false. Um, yeah, so you you bear with me, but you get this in real time. So it's about as genuine and as uh, as true as it can come. One thing I have written down though are the prices uh, and and the you know slight variations between the amplifiers that I'm going to run through quickly. If you don't care, just scooch on for a minute or so. So um, going from the bottom to the top in terms of price. So the H95 is a £1,600 amplifier, sits at the bottom of their integrated line. Still in the £1,600 bracket, it's, you know, it's shouting because that, that's not a cheap integrated amplifier. Next up, 120, £2,300. The, these two are in very tough territory in terms of their, their, their competition. But, you know, they're, they're priced so, you know. Um, the 190, £3,300. The 190s, personally, where I believe the Hegel integrated amplifier starts to step into the real, the big boy territory of integrated amplifiers. There's a notable, no, notable difference between uh, lifting the two as well. Um, one, the 190 being 19 kilograms and the 120 being 12 kilograms. So th there's, a, there's a very obvious difference of uh, heft, which is one of my favorite words. Um, between those two, but the 190, I believe, is is where they truly start to get great. Um, the 390, 5,000 pounds. So we're now into to big boy integrated territory. You know, 5K is a you've got to be good there. You can't. There's no there's no messing around in that ballpark. And then the 590 is 9,300. So 9,300 pounds. I don't know what it is in dollars and, and, and things like that. I know there's differences between Canadian and American stuff like that, but I've got to focus on our market. This is a shop, this isn't a review channel, you know. All of these products we sell and you know, we regularly to very happy customers. Um so yeah, the that's the differences in price. So they range from sixteen to nine thousand three hundred pounds. So it may be that when we do um the 95 or something like that that you're particularly interested in because one thing I'm not blase to is the fact that 590 is out of reach for most people um, and the 95 even the 95 you know it, it's still a 1600 pound amplifier it, 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 it's not cheap um, so you know I'm, I know that there is uh, relativity to the the topic so a certain type of person will watch a video on a 590, a certain type of person won't watch it at all. They're not interested because they don't want to see what could be had at 10 grand. They want to see what can be had in the sub 2,000 pound ter territory. That goes into me, um, rewind that a little bit. Power from the five, not a topic that interests me really, but a topic that interests most people, um, you know, it interests me from a dynamic point of view. When I know there's loads of power, we should have loads of bite, we should have loads of grip. And these aren't things that people usually uh, associate with power. It's more brute force and output 
you know, of course, you, they do raise with power, but power for me is the speed in transients, the, the, the speed in which it can just swing up and down, the pace of an amplifier, and like I say, the, you know, essentially explaining dynamics. Um, 60 watts times two at the bottom there for the H95, 75 watts times two for the um, 120, and then again what I was saying when we shift up to the 190, the 190 is a, a large step, you know, in, in, in cost and in performance, so you would expect it to be a large step. Uh, 150 by two from that one, uh, 250 by two from the 390, and 301 by two for the 590. Uh, that screams E60, I wanna say, M5, where BMW brought it out and they gave it 501 horsepower. Not just 500 or 510, they, 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 were, they were content with their 501. And it seems Captain Hagel is uh, content with this 301, which I like. Um, yeah, damping factors, over 2,000 for the two at the bottom, over 4,000 for the three at the top from the 190 to the 590. Big figures, which you can hear as well. The grip each and every one of these amplifiers has on the speaker is, is outstanding. This these this video series is about Hegel, but it, you know it's also about my sort of opinions of 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 the amplifiers. The the only relatively similar sound in amplifier that I've heard, which was another one that bowled me over, uh, were Plinius amplifiers. You know they, they have an extremely similar grip at the bottom end. Uh, Plinius amplifiers sell for substantially more money. That that grip and control in amplifier is so important to me. Uh, so that we don't we don't underdrive our speakers. We don't ask too much from the amplifier. That's when things can start sounding bad. You know that sort of unity that products have. Sometimes the the amplifier will seem like it doesn't have enough power uh, because we're demanding too much from the from the amplifier on the speaker's load. You know we're just putting too much of a uh, too much of a speaker on the amplifier, and that can happen to a lot of amps almost all amps to be fair, but things like the Hegel amplifier and, and, and the other amplifiers I've mentioned, they all have big grip and they just they just ring the neck of the speaker, which is what I like. I like the amp to be in charge of what's going on. Um, like I say, again, transients, dynamic speed, that's when all of that magic happens and comes together is when an amp really has grip of a speaker. So. That's the basics of the amplifiers. That's me running through what there is there. They're all, I'm sat in the way of them at the moment, but I'm sure I'll try and do a wonderful, artsy, emotional uh, sweep through. Have a look. <laughs> so I've got, the Hi-Fi Rose 150A, which is um, the streamer, I'm using it as a dedicated streamer into all of the amplifiers. I'm using the optical out. Now, the only reason I'm not using coax out is because I tried for sort of 20 minutes this morning. I've either got a setting wrong somewhere or I have a fault on a coax, on the coax output or input from, from something or somewhere. It's probably just me, so I've opted to go, I don't get an awful lot of time, I get kind of one day a week to do this, um, and that includes the editing, publishing it, the whole lot. So I've had to go for the optical output to keep things linear. I want to use the Hegel's DAC, I don't want to use the Hi-Fi Rose DAC, um, so that's why I've chosen to go digital. And that will be Tidal, and that's Tidal running from the Rose, so controlled via my phone, but not being streamed from my phone. So my phone will command it and it will pull it down itself. It is a marked improvement over airplay. So even if I airplay to the Rose and play that to the Hegel, or if I airplay directly to the Hegel, which sounds better than airplaying to the Rose, it still doesn't sound as good as if I command the Rose to pull it down from the net itself. It just works so well in that way. Uh, so that, that's how I'm gonna use that. Tracks, I'm not gonna bother listing certain tracks. I, I'm, I'm just gonna play what I want uh, and listen to music and see, if, see how well it engages me. 
Uh, like I say, I know the 5, 90, 3, 90, the 190 and the 95 well, and they all engage me in their own way. So, Analog, Project X2, which you can see, which will be on your right, it's on my left. Autophone cadenza black. In using the project output cables, there's no upgrades going on there, to the Hegel V10 in a moving coil set, which I've kind of set up myself on the V10, and that is on Analog 1 on any of the amps that we use, so it just goes into analog one on the amps. Uh, RCAs are called Epic RCA, and the optical is, I've put basic five pound jobby. You, you feel free to buy expensive digital cables. It, it is, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are things to be said about them. It's just that I, I, I'm fine with, fine with basic ones. I'd, I'll just spend more money on, on other bits, I suppose. And the first one for me to test is the 590. Now I'm aware that in these videos I go on quite a lot, it's because I am absolutely just talking to the camera that is my vessel to you guys, um, but I am trying to cover everything that I can w without any form of uh, scripting or, 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 or thinking about it beforehand. I need it to be pure and raw and that's how I like it to be. And I hope that's what a lot of other people like it to be as well. I, I, I just not to bash other people, I, I really, you know, I love what everyone does really, uh, but I, I can't turn this into some acty, cheesy, cool to be not cool type of thing. It really isn't me. This is, like I say, a shop. They're products that we sell um, and they're products that I believe in. There's products that have been here and aren't here now because I don't believe in them and I can't confidently commit to them. Um, and if it gets to the point where we've got the entire line of something, it, it's good, and we can trust it. So yeah, let's get into it. I'm gonna to listen to the 590, I'm gonna tell you what I think. I kind of already know what I think, and I'm using this as an excuse just to listen to it for a while. One thing I missed off my list of things that I'm using with all these amplifiers, and a very important thing, is the Dyn Audio Special 40s. Now, I've chosen the 40s specifically because they're a £2,700 speaker. So they kind of sit at the top of the first third in terms of cost, if that makes sense. Now, we've got speakers here that we can put that are designed for the level that, say, the 590's at. It's a hard ask for the 95 to perform or not be completely shown up by a speaker that is designed to be performing at the £10,000 amplification level, if that makes sense. I know that might sound slightly hypocritical considering um, what I just said about the damping factor, but it's all of the rest of the sum of its parts, you know? So we can't couple a 10 or £20,000 speaker with a £1,600 amp. So my speaker decision was made on a speaker that I know extremely well, and you guys know that I know that speaker extremely well. It's my favorite speaker. I've done my NS1000s, um, which I can't really use in this video because it's not a product that we, that we sell. So um, yeah, I've used them because of where they sit. Now, they all shine with the 590 because they're a speaker that will perform to their matched components, I believe. Um, and they'll also perform with the 95 because they'll eke out everything that that can do. You know, the 590, yes, of course, we could match them with, with the Heritage Special or, or the Evidence Series or whatever we want to do, um, or, you know, any speaker that's in here, really. Um, but it has to be a speaker that can consistently perform with all of the amplifiers. So we're using that. Um, we are using... QED Supremus speaker cables, bit out of the sort of league of, say, up to the sort of 190 stage, I'd say. You probably wouldn't want to be using that cable. It's just it's a lot of money. Um, but they're the cables that are in there and they're gonna stay in there from the bottom one to the top one. Uh, every, in fact, everything is just, just will just stay the same. You'll probably see that the rack that I've got there, which is just kind of for demonstration reasons and took me bloody ages this morning to sort out, um, there'll be an amp that's removed and the other amp put in its place and it'll kind of just go like that throughout. So, uh, yeah, let's get to it now. I've been talking enough. 
I'll try and shorten this all down um, and let's get to listening to some music. Which reminds me, <laughs> he thought it was over. It was... These guys, there's no affiliation here at all. I just absolutely love this shop. If you're a vinyl lover, you may have heard of it. It's got a great reputation. It's a quirky shop down in South Sea, pie and vinyl. They sell pies and they sell records and plenty of music memorabilia as well down there. It's only a little place, but great to go down there. These guys will have had a tough time over the past couple of years. You know, uh, it's not a sob story, but that type of business was affected by what's been happening with the pandemic and everything, more so than say businesses like our own. Um, almost all of my records, bar probably 10 of them, um, come from these guys. I'll drive down there, have a great afternoon, possibly have a pie, or maybe even a pie on top of a pie, which they do do, um, and buy a, a bunch of records at a time because I just lo I love the business. I love where it is. I love what they do. I think it's fantastic. And uh, yeah, so I will be playing a couple of questionable records, which I I love to know what people think. But Tango in the Night is one of my favourite from Fleetwood Mac. Liam Gallagher's As You Were, great album, makes me smile when I listen to it. Most people probably hate it. Lord gives it a fantastic sounding album. The music is, I, I, I really like what she does. It's odd, but you kind of, when you listen to this album, you kind of sends me to somewhere where I've never been. Like I've not got any memories with this album, but I can, there's a visual element to this album when I listen to it, so yeah. MIA, uh, not list this is Carla, I think. Yeah, I've not listened to this too much. All of her other ones I have done, so I'm gonna play a bit of that. Slim Shady LP, not a huge Eminem fan if I'm on it, if I'm honest, but the production on this is sound as a pound. Um, there's a couple of great tracks on that album. Um, this is a new one, Asian Dub Foundation, not heard it, so I'm gonna listen to that one. And the Incredible Bongo Band. Six inch drivers and bongos, they just they just live this this life together. They're, they're amazing. Hope this sounds good in terms of its production and how it's put together. Hope it just isn't thrown together by an idiot and it just ruins what could be a fantastic sounding track. Sudan Archives. If you like bass, you need them in your playlist. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna have a really good time listening to these. Probably gonna listen to all that lot first, actually then listen to some digital stuff and I'll stop boring you and I'll get on with it right now. So, listening done, um, yeah, let's have a quick look at the back first and then we'll get into what my uh, feelings are for this amplifier. So, buying a post, big old buggers, um, but they don't have, the only thing they don't have is a hole 
for sort of your, your your bare wire guys. Not that I could find anyway. It's a it's a solid binding post. Sometimes I like to put a banana plug in the hole and wind it on. Uh, you don't need to wind it on because the holes are typically the same as the banana plug size hole. Um, so that I've got a 90 degree but unpluggable sort of scenario. Tiny little thing, but it, it just it just doesn't have them. So it's quite a specific design to them. Of fixed level output, variable output, so you can control the the volume of whatever you are outputting to. Um, digital output, BNC uh, digital input, coax input, three optical inputs, USB, so computer audio stuff like that, uh, and your network cable. This isn't a Wi-Fi unit, none of them are. They, they need to be plugged into a network. Now, if you haven't got a network cable, you can get network bridges, which are really easy things to work with. They jump onto your Wi-Fi and supply a Cat5 output. Um, two XLR inputs, this is great. Now, I haven't done any of my testing in these because I can't do that below the 190. This is the 390. Um, this is the 95 and as you can see there's no XLR inputs on the 95 but there are on all of the rest of them. So analog inputs, three of them, so whatever you're using really, tuner, things like that, uh, CD player if you're not going to use the DAC. Um, yeah, and that's your, that's your inputs. Three pin plug and off we go, you know. But yeah, that is the 590 and this is really warm. Well, I, when I say really warm, I can touch it, you know, because um, it's been working hard. So back over to the table, let's have a chat about how it sounds. Right then, trusty notepad in hand. I'll put a picture, actually, pause that. I've been listening to that now for a few hours. You know, it's a it's a well played amp, so it's you know, it was already ticking over. I don't know if you noticed when earlier on in the video, it had been ticking over for a few hours anyway, so it was nice and warm. Yeah, it's exactly the same as the last time I heard it. So, right, so start with not not so much negatives, just notes really. Large, heavy, no holes in the binding posts. I'd said that earlier on. It's a big amp. All right, you know, uh, most amps that cost this sort of money are big and are heavy. Plenty of iron in there, power, all that sort of stuff weighs a lot. So, um, yeah, moving it around is going to be a bit of a pain. So, I want it in place, it doesn't really matter, you know. Other notes, um, scale, drama, and I've put thicker than water. So, it's another one of my uh, strange analogies. If water was the sort of detail Nirvana, then uh, this is slightly thicker, just ever so slightly, which is a positive thing for me. What it does is it gets up to clinical or analytical and it just winds it back slightly. And I'm of the opinion that just under there is your fun band. And that's where this amp's playing. It's what I like to hear. It's thick, heavy, but still retains all of that detail and the good stuff we want as sort of hi-fi fans yeah bottom end is better than the special 40s capabilities as i said earlier in the video i have to pick a speaker that's going to work with every one of them now that doesn't mean the special 40 doesn't sound good with the 590 it sounds fantastic it sounds superb you can just hear and maybe because i know the speaker and the amp so well you can hear when the amp is reaching for scale that can't be delivered from the special 40 but it couldn't it couldn't ever be delivered from the special 40 but i know that the amp is 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 trying to dig that little bit deeper um it just means that the Hegel h590 is better than the special 40 maybe it's as good as a contour 60 when it goes for that depth it's going it, to it's going to find it you know so not a negative quite a positive i suppose for the 590 it's just looking for stuff that the speaker can't deliver most people, I suppose, may not even realise that, may not hear that, uh, and not because they're, they're not good listeners, it's just because they don't have that experience enough with that speaker and that amplifier combined, or that amplifier with a larger set of speakers capable of, of more scale, you know, more, more depth. 
Um, so there's that. A particular track that I listen to, one, one particular track that I listen to is Greedy Soul uh, by Liam Gallagher. I don't expect you all to like it, but that particular part of my listening today, I've put, I've put thundering, huge soundstage, then I've written what a pleasure as a side note, um, and louder than my apple, which I'll explain in a minute. So that track is just an onwards assault, uh, and uh, props to him as well, because the record sounds good. Not just that I was enjoying the music, which I do enjoy his music, but it actually sounds good. It, it's it's not slapped together like a typical indie record, it, you know, and, and they're not really that fussed about the way that it sounds. So um, that was just a really charging, paceful track, and it, it really got me sort of involved, and uh, and and it just threw up a, a, a huge stage as well. You know, the, the width and height of it was great. Yeah, uh, I ended up turning that up so much that the apple that I was eating when I was listening to that track, I could no longer hear myself eating it. So that's where Louder Than My Apple comes from. Uh, I could no longer hear the crunch in, inside my own head because I was leaning on it quite a lot to, because uh, I was enjoying it. it. Just the record, the amp, the speakers, the situation, it was fantastic. Yeah, but it's th th this, this one's, probably, the, the last two are probably the most important parts of the character of this amplifier, in my opinion. Perfect character retention at any volume. So, a lot of amplifiers you get, and I remember years ago as a sort of hi-fi um, fan, and not, not so much having, you know, th th this, we had this place, but it was specifically car audio, and it wasn't hi-fi. Going to um, a certain store with a set of Dyn Audio Contour 1.3 SEs, the uh, Bird's Eye Maple sort of special edition, very very similar to the Heritage Special now, um, and I was take I I know that those speakers are a draw on most amplifiers, so I was taking them around and I was looking for an amp at around a grand, uh, just as a desktop amp, and the speakers were just off the desk, so I wanted a, a sort of relatively pint sized amp but had, had read or heard certain things about them, so they had, they had plenty of drive regardless of their figures. And all of them that I listened to that, that did, did nothing for those speakers. They could not drive those speakers at all. It, it, it really didn't work. Uh, but one thing they did do that was notable to me, each and every one of them, was with their increments of volume, they, their signature changed. They started to become relatively strained and and thin up top, or, or one of them particularly got a little more bass heavy up top, or almost as if it had some form of uh, of EQ, preset EQ, and uh, it just got all over the place, it was a mess. The 590, and I'd probably hazard a guess that all of them um, do the same, retains its characteristics at all volumes. So that volume I was talking to you about earlier, really loud, it was exactly the same, it was just louder. It was just on me more because, you know, but tonally, it's exactly the same. Um, or quietly, the, the grip it has, is, which is probably more impressive uh, on speakers down low at low volumes, was was extremely impressive. It still had that grip, still had the same sonic character at sort of the 20s and 30s. And um, one thing you will have to do is you, you do have to wind on these amplifiers a little bit, you know, that they're, they're very quiet down there. Um, so I'm my typical listening is around 50 to 70 on these. Sometimes I'm in the 90s, which is where I was earlier. Yeah, also as a side note there, they're extremely quiet in terms of noise floor. You can't hear, they're actually on right now, and you, you, you can't hear a peep from them. There isn't, you know, you have to be really close to them to get any sort of floor noise or hits. Um, and yeah, pro probably, uh, again, probably the, the most important part was um, delicate and powerful so those two things tend to not really go hand in hand they are the, the, the 590 is extremely powerful but it pays respect to all of the delicacies and intricacies and layers in music that power sometimes gets in the way of um this doesn't this it layers everything out it, it paints a huge picture whilst being forceful at the same time so um yeah, they're my findings of the 590. 
It's a 9,000... 300 pound amplifier, so it's a big buy, you know, but it's a big amp with a huge sound. It's a glorious piece of kit. And that's episode one of our Hegel H series integrated amplifier series, I suppose. Um, I'll put all the links and everything down below. And if you've got questions for me specific about the amplifiers or the speakers or anything that we've used, get in touch either give me a call or or you know comment down below and we'll i try to answer as much as i can i i don't tend to answer stupid questions so if you're still waiting for a reply um yeah take it easy have a nice weekend i'm carl and this is studio in car uh bloody hell i can't remember what speaker cable we're using